Hello, everybody. Hope y'all having a good Tuesday afternoon. Wait for this thing to ding and let everybody know that we are live. Getting ready for our Tuesday testimonies. It's going to be a good afternoon. I'm going to give this thing a minute or two until it dings. and Kind of let y'all know what we're coming up. There it goes. Or to get a few people popping on. I see Miss Linda on there. She's ready to go. Miss Linda Milstead. Good to see you, girl. And y'all worked your hineys off during the rodeo, but very proud of the welcome wagon. We give away hundreds of Bibles and put a lot of literature in people's hands. And gospel cowboy gospel tracks and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, here we go. We're starting to starting to pop on there. We sure enjoy these Tuesday testimonies. See Mr. Dan Peppered, my old buddy on there. Uh we got a neat, neat program for tonight. Uh I'm gonna give it just a few minutes here, kind of waiting on my uh person that's gonna give the testimony. I'm gonna wait for them to ask to join, but I just always come on a few minutes early. Let everybody kind of get going. I'm gonna look on here right quick and see who see who all is showing up on here. All right, we're ready. I'm gonna add my person here in just a second. All right. Testimonies are powerful. I'm going to share this scripture. I do it every week. That uh, One of these days I may not be able to do it, but i got to get somebody else lined out just in case something happens and I can't do it. I've never missed one, but I need to get, get somebody kind of trained up there. It's not much to it. But I'm going to read this scripture. Uh, never do one without it. Uh, it's uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and verse 11. It says, for the accuser, which is Satan, he is called the accuser of the brethren. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. So we all know that Satan is referred to as the accuser of the brethren. And it says, they have defeated Satan by the blood of the lamb. Thank God for the blood of the lamb. And number two, by the word of our testimony. So we all have a testimony. Uh, one thing we have to get over, including myself and all of us, many times we're ashamed of our testimony because we may have a testimony different than other people's, but God uses our testimonies no matter what. No matter what we've been through, we all have different stories, but they all work together for good. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and add my testimony lady, and we're going to get rolling. Got a good crew watching already. All right, let me. This thing always plays games with me. <laughs> I'm going to get you to hit that button again and ask to join Miss Kayla. We got, we're going to have Miss Kayla on here tonight, Kayla Fulteen. She's going to give her testimony. Uh you alerted me there, and I probably waited too long, but Kayla, if you will, make sure your signal's good and uh, ask to join that again. We got a second. We'll, we'll wait on her. She she had it ready. <clears throat> but it, this technology is always fun, but we always get it figured out. If you can click that button, there we go. Miss Kayla. All right, I'm going to. Playing games with me, Kayla. <laughs> Your request is hiding from me. I got you. We're moving along. It says the person is unable to join due to technical issues, so might check your Wi-Fi if you're in town. Just turn it off, and it should work if you got good signal in town. We'll get it figured out here. Technology, you got to love it. <laughs> See Mr. Todd on there? 
we're gonna, we're gonna get it figured out. Yes, uh, last week Miss uh, Valerie had a little issue with her Wi-Fi, and her phone was trying to update, so we had to work on that. We're gonna do it again. Process here. Be I told you Clayton was better at technology than me. See, she said she. See, she had said to she get had to Clayton. Show her how to do it. I'm getting a little I'm getting feedback, a little feedback on me, so I'm not going to talk much. Sometimes, sometimes, I, do, sometimes, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. Are you at home? Are you at home? I'm at home. All right. All right. Uh. I'm gonna turn you loose. I'm gonna turn uh, you loose. Uh, I don't know if everybody else can hear me. I don't know if everybody else can hear me. I'm gonna turn you loose. I'm gonna turn you loose. For a few minutes. Let you, for a few minutes. Give you let test you, one. You got a couple of things. You, you got a couple of things. 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 And uh, be quiet and let you roll on. I'll be quiet and let you roll on. Okay. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Kayla. And just to tell you a little bit of my background, um, I wasn't raised in church. Um, I, I really didn't know a lot about Jesus growing up. Um, I distinctly remember in the fourth grade learning that Christmas was Jesus' birthday. And that's just mind-boggling to me now. Um so prior to that, I just thought Christmas was about getting gifts and Santa. And so the only reason why I'm telling you that is just to really give you insight in how little I knew about Jesus as a child. Um, earlier that year, um, I was in the fourth grade. Um, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, and it had spread to her lymph nodes, and it was very serious. Um, I remember my mom getting chemo on my ninth birthday, and... Um, my mom, I've said this many times, but she's like this, she's stronger than most men I know. I mean, she's just a really tough lady. Um, and after two years of intense chemo, radiation, and surgeries, my mom was cancer free. But, you know, and a huge blessing that was, but unfortunately, fear and anxiety of her cancer returning was more crippling for her than the cancer ever was. Um, like Satan does to all of us, his lies can feel so real, daunting, suffocating. Um, he, pushed, he pushed the fear to kind of take over into where like anxiety became debilitating at times for her. And this is just proof of how, what a real problem anxiety can be. Um, how on earth can anxiety be worse than cancer? It's just, it's crazy. But um, it's one of those things that you can't, explain it until you know the feeling. So um, even though I wasn't raised in church, um, we went to vacation Bible school in his hill every summer. <clears throat> and his hill was a horse camp that was Christ-centered here in Jasper. Um, that same summer, um, I was saved at nine years old. And it was absolutely a seed that was planted, but it wasn't nurtured. Um, so some of the things I'm going to share tonight are very similar to the testimony I shared at church. So if you heard that, you'll hear some of the same things. Um, um, I often viewed myself as the dud of my family. Um, my sister was extremely smart and ex excelled in all the sports she did. And my brother was the light of my parents' life and was great at everything he did. I mean, he, he's Cooper Davis, for crying out loud. I mean, y'all have seen him excel in things, and I mean, he makes me so proud. But um, I just saw myself as like this ditzy mouse. I struggled in school. I was terrible at all the sports. You know, I tried so hard to be like my sister and do all the things she did. I looked up to her so much, and I, I just was terrible at everything she did. And um, after after many years, I finally found what... Um, brought me some confidence in my life, and that was rodeo. Um, and, and being lost spiritually or not knowing Jesus, you know, I would I would seek approval from, like, rodeo wins or, um, you know, just I was always looking to be a people pleaser. Um, so with rodeo, um, I went on to make the national high school finals, 
and I got a full ride scholarship to college. And, you know, rodeo changed so much about me and, and how I felt about myself. Um, and, and one cool thing about rodeo is there's lots of um, church, you know, in high school rodeos and even college rodeos, there are church services a lot of times in the stands. So here and there, I was hearing bits and pieces about Jesus, and um, of course, I was interested. So, um, But I was 19 years old, and I was in college before I fully understood what an intimate relationship with Jesus really was. Um, my college boyfriend broke my heart, and I somehow ended up in a cowboy church in Seeley, Texas, on a Wednesday night rather than a party or a, you know, riding my horse or doing all the normal things I was doing. And um, for the first time, I had felt that supernatural, peaceful feeling that you can only get from Jesus. Um, I'd never felt it before. Um, I was broken, but for the first time in my life, I felt the intimacy and love that I had just searched for forever. I never knew, like, the feeling that I was looking for I was never going to find in a person or anything on this earth. It was Jesus alone. And for so many years, I credited, you know, my difficult childhood for making me a strong adult. But at that point, I really realized that it was Jesus all along. Like, even when I wasn't seeking my strength from Jesus, he was giving it to me. Um, so... Um, that college boyfriend that ultimately led me to Jesus through heartbreak is now my husband. And many of you know Clayton. Um, even when we first started dating, his mom told me to run. And I was too hard-headed. I stayed. But um, we met when I was college rodeoing. And he was rodeoing professionally. Uh, we dated for five years before we were married in 2011. He was at the top of his game that year. He had um, won a CBR championship with a $100,000 bonus, and he'd made the NFR that year, and um, we got married the following week after his NFR, and man, I thought we were never going to see a broke day, and it's so funny because we've seen way more broke days than we've seen not since then, but um a couple months prior to us getting married, we started reading our Bible together every day. I had never read my Bible before. I, I honestly didn't know the difference between a verse or a chapter. Like, I knew nothing. Um, so um, this changed me. It changed my life. You know, the peace that came from just spending time with Jesus, I had longed for. Um, it was changing me. It was changing Clayton. And, and we were really building a marriage on a strong foundation. And for the first time in my life, I felt stable and secure. Um, a consistent, intimate relationship with Jesus um, led us to, you know, have a strong foundation in marriage. So the month after me and Clayton got married, at the first rodeo of the year, Denver, he broke his wrist. And he was out six weeks, which meant no income. And then he came back uh, to Houston, first rodeo, and hurt his hip. And that was a six-month uh, injury that also meant no income. So this was the first six months of our marriage. He had no income. Um, and, you know, I can honestly say I'm so thankful for those financial hardships. It seems silly or whatever, but, like, it taught me how to rely on Jesus because, I really had never done that before. Um, so Jesus continually provided for us all the time. Um, I'd pray for financial stability. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh, Lord, please let Clayton win a rodeo. But in reality, he gave me a second job and then eventually a third job. And But he always provided. It, it just wasn't the way that I guess I saw it or wanted it to be. Maybe I should have been more specific. Please let Clayton win a rodeo. But anyway, I learned a lot through that. So uh, Clayton and I continued to read our Bible every day. And as six years passed, I had a very intimate relationship with Jesus. But I was 29 years old, and I'd never been baptized. Never. Um, and I, even though I was so connected to Jesus and felt so close to Jesus, I still felt so unworthy to be baptized. And, I mean, I guess that's the point. Like, we all are. You know, it wasn't something we had to earn. 
you know, yeah. Jesus died on the cross yeah. for our sins. So uh, Romans 4.4 4 stuck out to me, and it says, um, When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God. And he had given me a free gift that I had to accept. It was my salvation. I just had to, I just had to do it. So on Easter Sunday, right before I turned 30, I was baptized. And um, I had a, um, our pastor made us do a memory verse, and that was Galatians 2.12. And it was, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And like you say, Chet, like I was on fire for God. I, I just... I had been for a long time, but it was, being baptized, it was just like this euphoric feeling. I, I can't really explain it. It just, you know, it was amazing. So, uh, later that year, through a discipleship group, Celebrate Recovery came into my life, and um, it was a tool God used to change me forever. When it first came in my life, I thought it was for me to help all the people that I love that struggle with addiction, because you know, five of the people that I love most have struggled with addiction at some point in my life, and I just knew it was to help them. I didn't know at the time that Celebrate Recovery, two-thirds of the people that are going are, are working on hurts rather than addiction. Um, so it was God's way of showing me that I wasn't this, like, worthless, insignificant person that uh, I viewed myself for so long. Um, and I've watched lots of my step study sisters do their testimonies, and they've done so good, and they're so inspiring. But as, as some of my step study sisters know, denial in the Celebrate Recovery step studies, the first lesson, it's a hard lesson. And I just had no idea what I was in denial about. E even after completing that lesson and meeting with my sponsor and talking about it, we prayed for clarity. And she said, you've just got to open your eyes to what God's trying to show you. And... He showed me all right. The very next morning, I had heartbreak. Um, Clayton calls me as I'm literally walking out the door to go to work, and he admits something to me that he'd been struggling with for several months. And, you know, I knew that he was off. I knew that something was different about him. But I was so shocked by his news. And his news is his testimony to share one day um, when he feels ready. But I'm just going to tell my my part of it. Um, so immediately with the hurt, you know, the devil's lies set in so strongly, um, I could only think of the worst, and I, I kind of couldn't see past what was right in front of me. Um, and two, from my viewpoint of Clayton, it just seemed like he didn't care that he, you know, had hurt me or anything. Um, but fortunately, I had my Celebrate Recovery step study to work through that hurt, um, and rather than brushing under the rug. And there's been many times I've wondered, you know, God put it in my life at the perfect timing. And, you know, I've questioned, you know, would we be married right now if I didn't have that? But absolutely, because it's not the step study. It was God that led us through that really challenging time. Right. Um, so, and to myself, I, I immediately put up like this wall of anger and this wall of, you know, hurt and hard-headedness. I don't even know if that's a word, but that's who I am. I'm very hard-headed and... Um, I wasn't being a godly wife. I wasn't saying nice things. You know, I wasn't loving Clayton through his sin like Jesus had loved me through my sin. I wasn't giving Clayton grace, and I certainly wasn't forgiving him. Um, before I knew it, the devil had taken a complete foothold in my marriage. And um, Ephesians 4.27 says, Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Now, I've, I've known that Bible verse forever. And, and what I've heard in it always was, don't go to bed bad. You know, that, that's what I got out of it for so long. But the second part to me is, is really what's most important. And that's, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. I, me, Kayla, was allowing the devil to have a foothold in my marriage by hanging on to that anger and hurt and um. Here we are. We had built this super strong marriage built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And I was giving devil, the devil the, foot, the foothold and watching it crumble right before my eyes. So um, 
This is something that pretty much no one knows, and it, it, it was years ago, but here I am. God led me to share it on Testimony Tuesday, but um, at that time, Clayton and I were talking about separating. Um, he was about to move out and move in with my little brother, Cooper, and but God gave him this job in Utah, and um, one thing I wasn't real clear on at that time was, you know, I took a lot of Clayton's shut off being shut off from me is, is him not caring, but he was losing his rodeo career. And that was something that was so painful for him. And to be honest, you know, years later, it's still hard for him. Um, and, you know, that was coming to an end because of injuries and surgeries. And if I hadn't been blindsided by my hurt, I think I would have seen it more clearly. But I was hanging on to that anger and um, I couldn't see how much he was hurting too. And it was like the perfect storm. You know, I was hurt. He was hurting over something else. And, and our marriage was just kind of like dwindling. Um, so with that being said, um, he was able to move to Utah. And we were able to be separated without a separation. Um, we didn't want divorce and we knew that. But it felt like any time we'd take two steps forward, we'd take three steps back or five steps back or whatever. It, was, it just felt impossible. Um, I was at home in, in Winnie working three jobs with a one-year-old. We had no family that lived in Winnie with us, and he was in Utah. And it was just a really hard season. But I had the Celebrate Recovery Step Study to help me get through that. And eventually, my heart got in the right place. Um, my sponsor, and of course, Jesus, mainly Jesus, um, I, I knew I had to be the bigger person. I knew that I had to forgive Clayton, even though he wasn't asking for forgiveness. Um, and I was no longer in denial that I had a huge part in getting my marriage to this really challenging place that we were in. <clears throat> and I'd love to say, like, oh, we're better than ever. You know, it's four years later and we're stronger. But, you know, we're still working through hard times. But I'm just so thankful that we are working together, that we're fighting for our marriage. And at the end of the day, we have each other. And, and, and that's all that really matters. So... Uh, moving on to a few months into my Celebrate Recovery Step Study, Clayton started talking about moving to Jasper. And, and we'd been together for 12 years at that point, and that was never a part of the plan. Um, we built a life in Winnie. We built a home in Winnie. And um, my initial response to him was, no, absolutely not. We're not moving. Uh, and, and my reasoning for that was all three of my jobs were around Winnie. And we loved our church, and we loved Maxie's babysitter. And and kind of when you're you're just surviving and, like, living, um, Maxie's babysitter was practically raising her. I was having to work so much. And um, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize at the time, you know, that was going to give me a lot more freedom with her. Okay, so normally whenever I... Um, tell Clayton, you know, no, that's not a good idea. He, he's kind of receptive and we can talk about it, but it, it wasn't happening. He, he, was, he was certain we were moving and he was not taking no for an answer. And, and in his mind, we were moving here to um, start this cutting horse business he wanted to do. And um, anyway, so I, I quickly realized, like, I needed to shift my way of thinking. I needed to be a submissive wife. I needed to pray about this. And um, so literally within no time when I started praying for God's will to be done, God's will started to be done quickly. Um, within one month, I got a job offer in Jasper, and no one knew that we were talking about moving. Um, someone came to look at our house and made us an offer. Our house was not even for sale. And then also at my main job where the majority of our financial stability came from, I was losing, losing half of my hours because a district was pulling out of that co-op. And so it was clear, like, okay, God, I have to jump on board. I have, and, and I did. I jumped on board, but I was fearful. Um, we had a home that we had built, and it was paid for, and our financial instability, that was scary to let that go. Um, and after all, you know, it was my home. I brought my baby there. You know, we had our first Christmas tree there. There was so much sentimental stuff, but it was kind of like that picture where Jesus has that teddy bear behind his back, and he's asking the girl to trust him with the teddy bear that she has. It, I felt the exact same feeling because I had no idea what Jesus had in store for me or for us. Um, so um, kind of a funny story, like 
everyone that knows Clayton knows how ironic this is that this came out of his mouth, but he told me, I want a magnolia tree at our new house. And I thought, well, my little rough, tug, you know, tough cowboy, that is a weird thing for him to say. But as we pulled up into this um, property that Angela, my our realtor, Aunt Jula, was uh, showing us, um, there was this crazy magnolia tree. I mean, like, you've never seen a magnolia tree like this one. And the ranch was called Magnolia Hill Ranch. We didn't even know that until we got there. And then also, there's like hundreds of magnolia trees. Like, it's just, I was like, okay, God, I know now why Clayton said that. It was weird at the time, but I get it now. Um, so, on top of that, you know, me being fearful that I was never going to have a home again, God gave me an incredible home. Um, it, it was an old 170 year old house but it was a it was a house worthy of a president's day um a congressman owned this house before we did and lyndon b johnson actually spent the night here and um i have pictures of him on my porch in the 60s so it was just like god thought that i was needed that you know and 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 i was still hanging on to something that was comfortable to me so um I was I was seeing very quickly that God had much bigger things in store for me than I had it for myself. And so about six months into uh, my new job in Jasper, um, my longtime friend and mentor asked me to be her business partner. And I did not see that coming at all. I mean, I, I really moved here to work less and spend more time with my baby. But like I said, God had other plans. He, he saw something in me that I never saw in myself. Um, so once I gave, you know, gave up on the comfortable, he, he really changed things for me. So, um, now I know God didn't move me to Jasper to have a nice house or be a business partner. I knew when he called me to move, it was for his kingdom. I knew that he moved me here with a purpose and I knew that it was to bring more people to him. Um, so as we're starting our Celebrate Recovery at JC3, there are so many days I'm fearful, and it overcomes me. Like, you're not good enough to do this, Kayla. Like, who do you think you are? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. And and then I remember what Chet says, and I'm just the PVC pipe. Like, this isn't me. This is God. I'm just the hands and feet. I'm just being obedient to what he's called me to do. So, anyway, that, that's pretty much it. That's good. I'm gonna see if I get the feedback. I'm gonna see if I get some feedback. Is that feeding back to you, Kayla? Is that feeding back to you, Kayla? Um, will, will it be like text? I mean, will it be like messages? No, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it when I no, speak, is it, is it, is it, it When I speak, is it messed up? No, no, I can hear you good. Oh dang! Well, my phone may be crazy. Oh dang! Well, my phone may be crazy. <laughs> Hey, if it sounds hey, okay to everybody, last time I had to okay check, last time I had to check, but I think it's just going to end if you can hear me okay. And if you can hear me okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hey, I want to bring okay. out just a hey, couple of things. Hey, I want to bring things. out just a couple of things. Uh, Kayla mentioned uh, something for you guys Kayla that are listening. Kayla mentioned something for you that, guys uh, that are listening that, uh, at this point in her life, or their, their life, life or their life, or their life, their life, their thing. I mean, that doesn't even make sense to the I mean, natural that mind. Even make but sense God, to the natural mind, but God, he's, God is powerful. He can, he God can take is powerful. He even can, what's he meant can for bad. Even what's meant for good. Bad. So, good. So, so. It takes a lot of faith to do that. It takes a lot of Another faith thing, to do too. That. Is, Another thing, too. Is, you know, she mentioned that she dealt with anger. She mentioned that she dealt with anger. Whoever's anus. watching this, whoever's no watching No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going you're not through, alone. You're not alone. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. And I mean, he's an accuser. And he's going to always talk you down he's from gonna doing something from God. He's going to always doing something from God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Else, he has the same else, old silly he has the same old silly tactic. He don't change him, he he don't for him for him most of the time. He's falling for him most of the time. But 
We have to see that step, like I said earlier. We got to see that step, like I said earlier. We got to see that step, like I said earlier. We got to see that step, like I said earlier. And another thing is, and another thing is, you know, like she mentioned, God saw some things in her. God saw some things in her. In the sea. So, I mean, that's how God works. He uses ordinary people. That's how God works. He uses ordinary people. Uses people just like you and I. Uses people just all of you and I. No matter who you are, all of you. No matter who you are, 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 no matter who you that, that was a powerful testimony. That, that was Ms. a Linda powerful said, testimony. Ms. Linda said, I'm going to take you all and I'm going to close this out here, right? Close this out here, right? My phone did with everything. My phone did with everything. It has a lot to do with everything. It has a lot to do with everything. Job. Keep getting your light shine. Thank you for letting your light shine. Thank you for letting your light shine. Thank you for letting your light shine. Thank you for allowing us to do it. That was a wonderful testimony. Wonderful testimony. Thank you. Man, that was powerful, guys. <laughs> hey, man, sometimes this, these internet connections, that little echo is in there sometimes. Sometimes it ain't. It's not. But she was thankful for financial hardships. Not during the time, but afterwards she can actually say, man, you know, she's thankful for those hard times because they do make us harder. When we go through tough times, I mean, it just knocks the rough edges off of it. It's just like putting a horseshoe in a forge. You get that thing soft so you can bend it a lot easier, getting the junk off of it. And, you know, the, the things that they went through, what a powerful testimony. I mean, no matter who you are, where you're from, somehow this testimony had to relate to you in some way. And what I like about is, is that God saw things in them and, and her and Clayton and even Clayton here, man, God, that's pretty cool. He wanted a magnolia tree, and they got there, and magnolia trees everywhere. But God takes uh, pleasure in, in blessing his children and giving us the desires of our heart. It's a process, and you got to pass the test when you're broke <laughs> and, uh, you know, struggling, don't know how you're going to make it, working three jobs, and Clayton's breaking his wrist, and he comes back and, and it messes up his hip. So nothing about that at the time was anywhere close to being glorious. It was just life. Sometimes life is hard, you know, but they never gave up and they had a purpose and a goal that every day, you know, when I tell y'all at church, put up your dukes. The reason I do that is because every day is a fight. Every day is a fight. And, and the fight many times is Satan fighting you and I, for our destiny. We have a purpose. We have a calling on our life. Number one, our first calling is to be a Christian man or woman and, and minister to our family. And then it goes from there. So but Satan wants you to get distracted. And he's, he's a liar. The Bible even says in John that Satan is the father of all lies. So just like Kayla said, man, he was talking in her ear and we all hear it. When we, it's, it notice it don't usually happen until we start to do something for God. That's not a coincidence, guys. It's not a coincidence. When you start doing something for God, there's going to be trials, opposition. And a lot of it's going to be Satan talking to us and saying, oh, you're not qualified. Just almost every testimony we hear that. So, man, what a great night. Man, that was a – Miss Kayla knocked it out of the park. You can tell she was prepared. I called her yesterday and said, hey, I'm just checking in. What are you doing? She said, well – I am working on my testimony as we speak. So I knew she's well prepared. So thank you, Miss Kayla, for a powerful, powerful testimony. Uh, spoke to all of our hearts. And I want to close us out with a word of prayer. Mike reminded me here to lift up Uvalde, Texas. That was a terrible, terrible situation. I can't even imagine. I just saw it, uh, saw it on the news, on Fox News. They were up before I went live. Matter of fact, for a second, I got a call. Someone was in the hospital from our church. I was going to the hospital and realized it was 6.30. I thought, Lord, what am I doing? My phone dinged about uh, 
about uh, testimony, so I, I would have done it in, in the parking lot of the of the hospital, but it, but it worked out good. I'm glad I got back here, but I, I just saw that. So thank you, Miss Kayla and Clayton, for powerful testimony. One of these days, we're going to have to get Clayton to do it. He loves speaking in front of the crowds. I'm always messing with him, but thank you, guys. What a neat couple, neat family. And God is in the business of using people like you and I, so don't listen to them lies Satan throws our way. Let's pray. Let's pray for you, Valley, Texas. Lord, we lift up you, Valley, Texas, in this terrible situation. I just found out about it a few minutes ago. Lord, would you comfort those people? You are a God of comfort. Lord, we see the Bible playing out right before our eyes in a lot of ways that we've never seen in our lifetime, but we know you are God. You're King of King, Lord of Lords. Lord, I just pray over those families that have lost loved ones. May you comfort them and give them peace that only you can give. We can't do it, but you can. We lift them up. We lift up the law enforcement, first responders, everybody involved in this situation, Lord. It's terrible. But Lord, I just pray your hand of protection be upon everyone and your hand of comfort and peace of those that have lost a loved one, Lord. May you walk with them and Direct them, and may you send laborers as we studied Sunday. May you put laborers across their path, Lord. The harvest is plentiful, and the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. That's what we studied Sunday. We ask you, Lord, to send the right people into these families' lives that can encourage and strengthen them and speak life into them, that we know this life is just temporary. But Lord, we just pray for strength, peace, and comfort, Lord, that you comfort their hearts and use people in their area, Lord, raise people up, put them in their path to speak your word over them, Lord, and we just thank you for strength and for peace in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Thank y'all. What a great testimony. Golly, that was awesome. Miss Kayla, she took care of business right there. That was good. It was a lot, about 30 messages in that little testimony there in, in 30 minutes. That was powerful. So y'all be blessed. Uh, Enjoy these Tuesday testimonies, and we will see y'all next. I'll see you in the morning at 640. Don't forget our live uh, little devotions, and looking forward to next Tuesday already. Y'all be blessed. Love you guys. We pastor the greatest church in the world.